portrait photographer and uh, today I decided to go over your comments under my video and uh, read it answer some and, uh, oops answer some questions uh, you can definitely write your questions in the comment section for the extra ones but uh, today just we are gonna be reading your comments answering maybe gonna help you somehow by answering okay so while people is going to be pulling, I'm going to start uh, reading and go over. So Bartos asking, hi, do you like doing photo shoots in crowded places or do you prefer such a schedule, uh, secluded places actually? Uh, I like to do both. I like to do in uh, whatever, uh, whatever I have option, whatever the people wanted to have it. So I like to go to shoot in downtowns, in cities. I like to do in forests, in the grasses, in the fields, in the lakes. So basically, whatever the idea we come up with the client, and we're gonna go. So it's not about is it gonna be crowded. Of course, well, of course I like to shoot more where where when it's a way way less people or no people that's gonna provide you or give you better images and composition with the clients but whatever whatever the location offer i will try to adapt to that location so give me a second gonna All right, we're gonna go to the next question. I never amazed with, I never amazed with twenty eight to seventy. Don't know why. Well, it's a for the taste. Uh, twenty eight uh, seventy lens is actually it's for person who like to shoot more fashion, or well, it's not for every person. It's a heavy lens, definitely. <laughs> the question was uh, asked by Deza. Parents, there's a parents, I can't even pronounce. All right, let's continue. Now, uh, Maki Javi asked the question, nice work. Was your lighting all natural? Looks like there may have been some fill, but I don't notice any umbrella or on camera flash. Yes, uh, I don't use for my for most of my photo shoots. I don't use uh, any fill lights or umbrella. I try to use natural available light on my photo shoot. Most of my for most of my photo shoots, but I do sometimes use fill light. But if you're watching my videos, if there is no any umbrella or there is no flashes, there is no nothing there. If I will use it umbrella or any flash I will show it in the video so if you don't see any video any fill lights it's mean there is no fill light for that picture it's a natural light then all right let's go to the next question okay well I love your work and those are the two lenses I'm looking to get. Thank you. Uh, I think he's talking about, uh, it's a GRM Mandria. He uh, talking, I think, about my most favorite two lenses, the 2870 and 85mm lens. Okay, Palu. I have the R6, need a second body and I'm debating between R5 and R6 M2. Should I get the R5? Uh, for me, it's really hard to tell which camera to get. Uh, each, both of those cameras are really awesome and they will do the job. So whatever you feel you like better, R5, I think is gonna have more megapixels. So if you need more megapixel, then you go for R5. If you just wanna have a little bit cheaper or maybe uh, uh different little bit they both pretty gay pretty good and similar so whatever you choose is going to be a good one so for palo okay let's continue so r6 uh r6 mark 2 and r5 they both really good camera so it's really up to you all 
All right, I have some comments in the comment section. So David Odell, do you use same lighting techniques on sunny days as you do on overcast day? It really depends. I'm looking for directional light. I'm looking, I wanna make sure this is the quality light and directional light. I don't like shooting in the mix or really hard, harsh light. I'm always going to look for soft, uh, really soft light. So that's why most of my photos is scheduled for uh, sunset time or blue hour or golden hour. That way uh, my picture is going to be beautiful and soft. I don't like shooting in the midday. So I usually don't shoot in midday. So uh, that's going to be my answer for you, David. Uh, Shogad McCoy. How do you shoot with natural natural when the weather is cloudy? Same way, um, when you're shooting the uh, in the when the when it's cloudy, you look for the quality light. You have to understand uh, where the where the light is coming, where the light is not coming. So basically, uh, I would look it up where the open sky and create kind of like a directional light to the subject. Uh, I have videos, I think I did a show and I did create some videos how I shoot in the directional light in a forest inside and I do explain it. So basically it's gonna call, let me actually give you the name of the, give me a second, the video name. Uh, how I shoot that way. Okay, so I'm gonna need to open up. Give me a second. I hope I'm gonna find it. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, let's copy the link and I will share it in the chat. Okay, here's the video that I explain how I'm finding good light on the model. So basically uh, you can, after the live, you can go and watch it. And uh, I think I explained pretty good uh, how I work with the overcast or, uh, or basically how I'm finding the light. All right, so we're gonna continue reading comments and you definitely keep continue writing your comments in the chat, so. And let's continue it. Nice. Uh, Fell M in comment section writing Thank you. Do you shoot mostly at 1.2 or what is the widest you would go when using 1.2 lens? I shoot all kind of different um, aperture, but my most favorite is 1.2. I like uh, dreamy blue backgrounds as I'm shooting mostly families and kids. This is actually my primary uh, photo shoots and uh, for family photo shoots and kids special photo shoots. Uh, this is one of the best uh, setup shooting at 1.2, creating dreamy portraits. That's what parents love it, that's what they're buying, so. All right. Okay, answer is done. Let's comment that is answer it. And I see a comment here, comment here. As a new photographer, how can I build my portfolio? Uh, the easiest way to build a portfolio is taking a picture of your relatives, learning the learning the light and everything, and then ask for your relatives. I think every person has some kind of relatives. Uh, maybe you have some, uh, your sister, brother, kids, or even your brothers and sisters in younger or anything like this. Just ask them to take pictures, practice on them. And then whenever you start, whenever your portfolio start growing, you're gonna share them on Instagram, on posts. Then some people gonna start asking you uh, for taking pictures, use that opportunity as to build in the portfolio and just keep going. So, but the easiest way to practice, it's a sister, brothers, cousins, uh, third cousins, whatever is around you or friends, relatives, whatever. That's the easiest way 
to practice and create images. And whenever you build up your portfolio, then more people, stranger, more, more strangers gonna ask you to take pictures. So that's how I start. I start taking pictures of my sisters, my cousins, and you just do that way. <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. All right, let's continue reading and answer questions. I mean, comments, <laughs> comments. Can I ask why? What type of the camera you started off? Oh, I started a long time ago. I started probably uh 15 years uh, i think even more already 16 years i started taking pictures so i start with canon 10d so it was a long long time ago canon 10d it was my first camera that i started all right let's mark that that we read and answer that question okay let's continue Beautiful. Can you do a video with your camera settings? Uh, no shutter speed and ISO. I'm talking the menu settings of your camera. Uh, <laughs> there is not much about my setting. It's just a standard settings. I don't use anything like something special. Uh, most of them, the most important, well, I do. I shoot my all my images with after white balance and I shoot only raw. So other changes or settings, uh, whatever I need to change something in the camera, I will do that in the processing, basically in the Lightroom. And so my settings in camera, standard, completely standard, there is nothing special uh, with the settings. And um, the, the biggest settings I would suggest that I'm shooting, it's a, I'm shooting all my photo shoots with RAW. That's, and I do shoot most of my, Portraits with after white balance. You are very good at posing. Do you have any advice? Practice. The biggest thing is a practice, testing, and practice. Looking at the images uh, that you really like, looking at the pose, and whenever you have a model or you, whenever you have a subject, try to copy and do it your way that pose. So basically, you're gonna need to watch for the hands, legs, hair, everything. So basically it's uh, the composition. This is the only way you can actually learn it or take a classes for the posing, get some classes, how to pose, go to the photographer who's doing really posing, go to him, get a class. Uh, and uh, that's gonna quicker learning is gonna be it. So you're gonna learn quicker for the posing. And actually posing, it's one of the most hardest, uh, uh, what it's called, subject. <laughs> it takes the longest to learn how to pose uh, people. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's mark as we read and answer it. How do you edit this photo? Okay, I edit uh, die Sutter, right? How do you edit this photo? I, I'm editing all my photos in Photoshop and Lightroom. I do have some videos on my channel, how I'm doing editing. If you guys wanted to see how I'm editing or if you are my friends like to see more editing on my channel, so make sure or do support my channel by uh liking and commenting on the latest video so whenever i post the latest video for video if it's reach 300 likes uh, then i will edit one of the images from that video so that's going to be your support for my channel if you want to choose video i mean if you want to choose image from the video for me to edit at uh, your choice if you donate uh, on thank you or you support me in my channel by thank you, thirty dollars or something or more, uh, you can send me. You can tell me what image you want me to edit, and I will create the video for everyone. And that way, 
uh, that way I'm gonna create edit. Otherwise, it's a uh, any video that reach within week 300 likes from that video I uh, will edit, create the edit video. How I'm editing. Okay, so make sure you support this channel. <laughs> okay. Reply. Okay, so uh, Norma. I love your editing style. Could you make some videos on how you edit? Yes. Of course, I will make some new editing video, but I need your support, my friends. I need support on my channel. So if my channel gonna uh, start growing and uh, if my channel gonna get more likes and get growing, get attention. So the first uh, first number, it's a 300 likes on my any newest video, which in week. If I'm gonna get 300 likes, I will right away create a editing video from that, from any of the portraits that on that video. Okay, or you can donate. If you wanna do quicker, you don't wanna wait, just donate $30, choose the image from that video that you donate on the Super Chat, and I will right away create uh, one of the videos from, from there. Okay, so I do have more questions. Hi, you made a good job with your photo. It's, it's nice to learn from you. Awesome, thank you, Maria. I'm happy that you're learning from me. Uh, big fan, always putting out clean work. Thank you so much, Gio. Thank you, uh, Sio. Thank you for time. Your photos are awesome. May I ask, how do you set up white balance when you shoot in golden hour? Okay, so why I shoot everything uh, after white balance. My camera, I'm shooting with the R5, R5 doing good job choosing the, the right colors for me. And uh, I'm shooting all my images in RAW. So basically, if I'm shooting in RAW, I can make any tweaks or twinge, whatever it uh, requires to change the colors. So basically, raw, after white balance, R5 camera doing a great job for me, um, choosing the right colors. Sometimes I'm using what it's called. Uh, let me show you the camera, hold on. Let me actually pull up my camera and I will show you something. But. Okay, so okay, I hope you're gonna see that's actually <laughs> turn it opposite way. I like to use white balance shift. So whenever I uh, whenever I have too much green, then I will go to the magenta or whenever I have too much red I will add blue or whenever I have too much blue especially in uh, at nights or whenever it's a blue hour I will go add uh, red or I can go in the middle somewhere like this so it really depends uh, if the camera not choosing me the right uh, colors then I will use this graph in my R5 camera I cannot tell about other cameras, other companies such as Sony and Nikon because I'm not uh, using those cameras. So you have to look up if you have something like this in your brand. Okay, so you're welcome, Sio. Give me a second. I'm gonna mark whatever I I did answer. What preset you use for editing? Okay, Mitchan Acharya asking the question: What presets or what preset you use for editing? Can you teach photo editing? I did already answer about editing. So whenever one of the videos reach three hundred likes, I will edit uh, one of the images from that video. Uh, I don't use any presets. I do use my actions that I created to speed up my job, but, but I don't use any presets. I do edit manually all my images. Okay. 
Okay, let's mark that we answered that question. And let's continue to the next one. Okay, so the mission of 85 1.2 is for full body family photos. One would dream a book. Okay. Well done. You make break breakthrough from old school aperture role for group photography. Well, yeah, I did. Uh, I have video. So Johnny, tell me about it. Yes, I like to shoot my group family pictures with 1.2, but uh, there is a rules which you have to follow. And I did explain in one of the videos. Uh, in one of my videos how I do that so basically you can break but in the same time you have to follow some other rules when you're breaking so or you can experiment experimenting that's uh, what makes you a great photographer and if you're gonna uh, find the video how I shoot 1.2 how I shoot family portraits with 1.2 uh, that is a good explanation for you how I'm using and you know, how I'm shooting the group big groups uh, 1.2 Okay, we answer that for John and Y. Okay, let's do to the next one. Arana L. Chan. Thank you, I'm trying to recruit two of my besties for, with the idea of practicing exactly this. So this might help, but they are shy. <laughs> All right, then you have to work with them somehow. <laughs> Every person is different, so it's gonna take time. Any plans for upcoming content along this same lines for you guys, especially if they're much taller than you? My boyfriend is definitely more willing to volunteer. Well, I do have a lot of contents, Arena, so keep watching the videos. I think there's going to be more content going to coming. Okay. And and excuse my and excuse my accent uh, as my main language is Ukrainian. And it's not easy for me to read English correctly if I doing mistakes when reading or answering or incorrectly. Excuse me. About that, I have a huge accent. <laughs> okay, Jonah asking, Hi, Sergio, for family of 10 photos at 0, 010, what aperture were you using? Still 1.2 or you shoot from the far and then crop the photos? Seems large groups uh, spend 80 of the full frame. Will be very hard to keep every face to stay in one focal plan under aperture 1.2. Thank you again for your sharing. You your masterworks are very inspiring. Yes, uh, Jonah, I do have video where I'm completely explaining how I'm shooting big groups at 1.2. There is a rule that you have to follow and you can manage, uh, put all the people in 1.2 focal point. So basically, uh, if you're gonna pose every single person in a horizontal line and you're gonna stay horizontally to the every single person that in your group, you can easy put them, uh, everyone in the focus. Uh, well, for the big groups, I'm sometimes pro can and will maybe using sometimes, let's say 2.0 or 1.8. So it depends. If I feel I need to do that, I will definitely go to the 2.0 or even 2.8. But if I manage to put all my people into one line, horizontal line, then I will shoot at 1.2. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you ever... Okay, let's read now your comments. Thank you for the time you for us. Oh, so may I ask how do you set up? Okay, I did answer that question. Do you ever do five light portrait shoot and what equipment brand do you prefer to use only pro photo and their modifiers i like to use one light or two three lights from one to three lights in my studio portraits so sometimes i do use four lights but not five lights most of my portraits are three lights one or three light or maybe two 
it's answer for the junior david odell do you do in-person workshops uh not yet right now but if it's going to be requested and you're willing to pay uh then i will uh i like to shoot more for the people uh pictures if photographer willing to invest or pay for for my time then i will do your use your use picture portrait profile from r5 or standard are you change this in Lightroom? Yeah, okay. For my R5, I'm using standard, correct. I'm using standard. I like more richer colors, more uh, colorful. So I will change that in the Lightroom. I need your full editing, some PSD files. <laughs> yes, I already answered for that. If anyone... Uh, I will not guarantee they're gonna provide any PSD files, but I will sh create a video for uh, how I'm editing. So basically, uh, but I have requirements uh, that you, my friends, need to follow. The, the requirement is really easy. As soon as one of my videos reach 300 likes, which in a week from the post, I will do from that video editing. I will edit one of the image from that. Or, or if you donate $30 as a thank you under that video via, via thank, uh, thank you support. All right, you are making awesome results all time. Thank you so much, Govind. Govind, I hope I pronounced correctly your name, read it. Okay, let's continue uh, writing, I mean, answering the questions. Okay. Okay, I think I did answer that one. So we're gonna mark as we answer in the comment section. Okay, let's move it. Thank you. I'm just reading, sorry, I'm sometimes reading comments here and I do answering here directly. Silly question for family photos of seven at 332. Aperture 1.2, if zoom, to individual faces will everybody face eyes look in focus good question um some people that a little bit maybe slightly behind they maybe have a little slightly softer uh not that sharp that uh that front one but it's more than good enough it's more than good enough if it's a slightly not much it's not gonna affect quality of the whole image whole idea so uh that's my answer Jono, for you John Y. Okay, but if you're gonna, sh yeah, but if you are shooting from bigger distance, so probably uh, you're gonna have approximately that much distance where you can place your uh, family subject a little bit, maybe even more approximately. I would say one foot to two foot. It really depends how far you are shooting from the group if the more the further you're shooting the bigger you have a uh, focal distance where you can place your uh, people or subjects the closer you coming then shallower it's gonna be so that's what you have to remember and so basically if i shoot from far away then i can easily place uh, two lines of people in that kind of section so i will probably in the back row i will ask them to lean forward and they're going to be in focus so there's uh, many tricks that you can do to make them in the focus but uh you have a, uh but you need to always remember that you have to be parallel to the group if you are standing a little bit in the angle then one of the sides is going to be bluer and other one is going to be to blur if you focus it in the middle okay you gotta make some awesome result thank you okay um Mahfoud, how should i price my photography sessions what i have right now is two flashes and salt box some backdrop and occasionally use outside for my photo shoot for my shoots uh, 
I cannot tell you how much you should charge it because there is so many ways you can charge and you have to try test it with many fails uh, whatever you find uh, the right way to charge and whatever is makes uh, comfortable you you can charge that price so I can't really tell you because every location every client is different and every person is different so basically there is many approach you can do and uh, some people like to sell separately every image uh, and uh, let's say in direct meetings some people sell their images online um, so it really depends on your location and how much you're gonna price. It really depends how much people people that you working with them they willing to pay. So it really depends for different situations and uh, uh, you have to try different. You can try sell try sell separately your images. You can try make them groups. And whatever people willing to do or pay you, stick to that and then just increase uh, your price little by little. Which software you use for editing? Okay, <laughs> that's the easy question. I think right now, Photoshop and Lightroom. That's two Photoshop. That's the two main softwares for editing. Well, there's uh, other ones, but I don't. But I don't use them. So I using my per me personally using Lightroom and Photoshop. How to be assistant in the editing process? Uh, to be con to be consistent in editing you have to choose your style you have to practice it's gonna take a couple years and if you're gonna continue uh, retouching retouching and editing the images then it's gonna come uh, as a memory and you start memorizing what you did last time and you're gonna be applying in the next time so basically if you spend a lot or if you edit let's say uh, 300, 500 images, you're gonna know uh, how to be consistent. Can't even pronounce consistent. Yes, <laughs> it just um, you're gonna memorize everything. Okay, I hope I did answer that for you. Okay, so I have right now in Russian, Russian question. Здравствуйте, у меня вопрос: сколько вам лет и со сколько лет вы начали заниматься профессиональной фотографией? Спасибо. Ну uh, я уже, как говорится, в средних годах и начал я заниматься в 2005-2004 году фотографией. То есть я начал снимать в 2004-2005 году. Answer to AD. All right, thank you. I appreciate. You're welcome. Uh, Randall Adams asking the question, what is your favorite focal lens? 50, 85, 135, 85. My favorite lens is 85 and I using a lot, a lot. And I do using a lot 28, 70 millimeter and 28, 70 millimeter uh, really nicely covers my uh, 35, covers 35, 50 and up to 70. Okay. I would probably add 135, but I don't see right now for uh, good use because it's going to look similar to 85. Okay, let's continue reading. Comments. Johnny, learn from your works for Dreamy Book. If I had, sh had shoulder, 85 is enough. Hold on. Good. Uh, Johnny, for your question, for the last question, I really cannot answer that. This is kind of like, I can't really understand the point. Uh, okay, so... Okay, gonna continue reading your questions in the comment section. Uh, 7200, are you using 200 millimeter most of the shots? Such a beautiful bokeh. I like to use, uh, when I'm shooting with the 7200 kits, especially kits, I like to shoot with 7200 millimeter. Uh, and I do try to shoot with 200 millimeter if I can, if my distance uh, allowing me, I will shoot at 200 millimeter. 
that's for sure. Okay, Jono give me so many questions in the comment sections. <laughs> Thank you, Jono, for uh, supporting my channel, writing so many questions. And I hope I did answer and help you with the answering. Okay, beautiful girl model is she searched that no <laughs> she asked uh, okay jonah asking me for, uh, for on under one of the videos that if that's the girl my daughter no it's not my daughter i do shoot lots and lots of uh, different people a photographer for tales thank you <laughs> okay give me a second my friends as you can uh while i'm answering questions some questions uh on the comment section you can ask me questions right here and i will back come back and we'll read your questions in the comment section Yes. The AD Dan uh, right 85 millimeter is always great for portrait. Yes, it's my favorite lens for the portraits. Oh wow, CEO <laughs> ARS 900. Thank you so much. Wow, first donation for me. Thank you so much. That's a good one. All right. For your donation, I will do one editing video for you. Choose the from the latest, from the last uh, video, any of the portraits that you want me edit. Give me this, uh, tell me which one, and I will do that for you. Okay, what was the question in Russian? Now give me a second. Let me come back and read it quickly. Oh, the question was how old I am. Uh, the question was how old I am and when I start taking pictures. So the, uh, I am in a mid age, so around 40 years, 39 right now. And I start taking pictures at uh, 2004, uh, 2005. Okay, I did answer that. Okay, let's do it. What was the question in Russian? Okay, I did answer that. You like 200 mm for children. Any special reason for that? Okay, so yes, it's a good reason for the children's because a children sometimes, uh, let's say you're shooting, uh, well, well, sometimes, let's say mom bring three years old boy or girl. They really scare of uh, strangers. And whenever you come really close, they become really HD, become really scared, and pretty much they will not let you to take picture at a close distance. So basically, when I'm using 200 millimeter and from farther distance, they usually uh, act way better than if I'm coming really close to that child. So children sometimes three years, two years old, better to take picture from distance than closer. Because every children is, you know, uh, really act uh, not good or badly if stranger come too close to them. Basically, they will run to the mom, to the dad. They will start crying, you know, many things. So that way, I will put my seventy-two hundred lens and keep distance, and will let the children to do whatever they like, and I just wait for the moment. I hope I did answer the questions. And sometimes there is no other way to do that. Thank you. Yes, I will do that for you because this is the one of the first donation on my live. So, and specifically for the first comment, I will give you that choice. Choose the image and I will record my one of my editings from the last uh, from the last videos. You can you can go choose my two last videos, choose one of the 
images and I will do the edit and record it and post it uh, which in probably a week or two whatever is good whenever I have a chance I will record it okay but you need to uh, type the title name uh, ti video title and the uh, time what image you wanna okay let's continue reading the questions this work is awesome okay okay let's continue reading great tutorial all right, Ricky telling me that this is a great tutorial. I'm really surprised that when you had the twins spread out on the same plane that the outside edge did not get soft. I'm always had the perception that the further you go from center of the edge would get soft at a shallow depth of field. Well, possible. If you're using low quality lens, uh, cheaper lens, then probably you're gonna have soft edges. Uh, that's why I'm a, I like to use it for my portraits, uh, high-end lenses. That way I can spread my people whenever I shoot portraits to the, any edge and I don't have to worry that my edge is going to be soft. So if you're shooting, uh, let's say, cheaper lens, I cannot guarantee that you can actually uh, create exactly image that I'm creating. So that's answer for the Ricky. especially the main thumbnail image <laughs> all right okay still working on and still working on identify ident <laughs> can you pronounce that still working on identifying location for shooting so those videos are helpful that's awesome i'm really happy that this video helped you simple yeah you can actually create uh i'm gonna tell you one thing that uh uh, you can really create beautiful portraits in any locations if you learn the lighting. The lighting learn is the most important in any photo shoots. And you can find good light in any time, in any, even in the midday. If you are shooting uh, in the city, let's say if I don't have an uh, option to go in the sunset time and I have to shoot at the midday, then I will choose location city in city i always can find a shaded or beautiful light between the buildings All right, Johnny, Sergi, Sergi, and Irene Rudnick are the two photographers I admire. They both shot 85, 1.2, and turned ordinary people into dreamy celebrity. Thank you so much. Uh, I really like Irene style. Irene, Irene style. Actually, she's Ukrainian as well as me, and uh, she's one of the most favorite photographers that I do like it. Okay, definitely. Okay, Mohammed Aram, can you explain the lighting in that photo behind you? Is that lighting true? I want to hear your explanation. Thank you. Yes, this is a natural light, uh, completely natural light. So, as you can see right here, the main light direction, the main sunlight coming from behind the trees. Is actually somewhere like around here that's the Sun it's actually sunset time and I have a here here at that side in the front of the child open big sky and that's the actually my key light coming from this direction and uh, creating a beautiful highlight on that side and I do have a shadow size because the I have big open sky on that side and I have trees on that side and that's how I create a three-dimensional portrait. 
And uh, I don't know if you go watch my some of my videos. I and I do have, I think, video from this boy. Yes, I do have the, a video from this boy on my channel how I created this portrait. So if you go uh, find it, you will see how I created that one. Okay. I hope I did answer for you. Let's say you are shooting wedding. You are shooting weddings? Yes, I do shoot some weddings, definitely. You have nice posing for this event. Thank you, you're welcome. Okay. I watch your videos since 2020 and I learned a lot, but I started taking pictures in 1980 with 35 camera. Most of, most of my pictures are wildlife and uh, aviation, not portrait. Thank you for all your videos, you're welcome. I did shoot a lot of nature. I like shooting nature, but right now I concentrate more on people. And uh, but I do have many actually nature pictures. Let me actually show you some. Okay, so here's my some nature. Okay, that, that way you can see better. So it's a fun. Whenever I have, let's say, destination or wedding, I will get extra one, two days and we'll go and take some around nature portraits. Okay. Okay, so let's go answer some questions. Can I get a golden hour effect with the normal sunlight? N uh, no, you cannot pretty much, uh, Shogun. I'm not sure if you can. Maybe if you're gonna uh, do some Photoshop uh, manipulation, then you can actually add uh, sunset, you know, kind of sunset light to the, your portrait, but it's not gonna be that beautiful and that nice. It's if you're gonna be taking portraits on the sunset light. Okay, I bought uh, Sony A640 uh, and 18105 f and F4 lens. I know that is not specially for photography, but still, can I take good photos now with those? You definitely can. You can you can create a, like a fashion one portraits. Uh, definitely, you're not gonna get effect as. 1.2 lens creates uh, like a dreamy portraits, but if you this uh, if you decided to do kind of like a fashion style, like a model fashion styles with the everything sharpened up image, you can even use harsh light. Uh, definitely, you definitely you can create some interesting shots. A lot of portraits, really image, really beautiful high end portrait created with uh, f10, f8, f stop. So it's really. The, uh, about your creativity and uh, uh, your thinking. So basically, uh, some even people just only shoot at F1, uh, let's say at F8, F10. Okay. Who do you use for your printing? I like to use Bay Photo, I think, Bay Photo Lab and White House CC, White House. Custom color, white house. It's whcc.com and Bay Photo Lab. Okay, Rick Ross. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's continue reading uh, comments now. David writes, the cat's still the show and great work from both of you. Thank you so much, David. Okay. Mm 
Okay, Jonah, <laughs> search is more than a photographer, you are a director. Thank you so much. Yes, definitely, you need to direct. That way you're gonna create better portraits. So learning how to direct people, that's gonna help a lot to create a beautiful portrait. So it's a Joni writes that. Thank you, Joni. Jono, why? Jono, why? Photo Zen. Amazing how much time and effort spend on counteracting what everybody nowadays scream. Okay, thank you. Give me a second, I'm trying to answer on the regular questions. Okay, while I'm answering here questions on my chat, do you uh, you can write here. Okay, such a low lighting would never work with my lens. You are very good photographer. Your editing is on point two. The NG write that. Uh, if your NG choose one point two any lens or one point four or two point oh, you gonna manage to make similar portrait easy. You just need to have uh, really a really good lens with one point two. Or 1.4 and you can easily achieve the same results it's ng okay let's see if somebody write any comment here do you okay do you use dio pure bra or the program of sharpening uh, DXO. Yeah. Okay, pure raw. I'm shooting everything in raw and I, whatever I need, if I need to do sharpening, I will do sharpening in the, as a final thing. So basically when I'm uh, converting it to the JPEG format, then I will do the sharpening after I convert as a final thing for the, for the JPEG. Con do you have a favorite mirroring mode for exposure? Okay, so... Okay, let's open up here. I hope my camera is gonna be... Okay, uh, give me a second info. Okay. Trying to open my meeting. Okay, so here is the my meeting setup. So and basically you can see all my settings in camera right now when I'm shooting. So oops, hold on one more time. I hope you can see the metering mode. It's right here. And All right, I hope, David, you can see what I, what I show you. <laughs> okay, let's continue reading. You can continue writing your questions. You're welcome, Dave. My question is, where do you actually focus to one of the two male girls' faces? Okay, so I'm, I'm always, okay, the, it's a good question by Kyle 
on my comment section under one of the videos. Okay, Kyle, I'm always focusing on to the middle person or on the front person. Or trying to, if I have groups, I try to find whatever the person is in the middle. And I'm always focusing on the eyes. So right now R5 camera is has really great autofocus, basically specifically if, uh, has really nice the face detection and eye detection so we'll let uh, my camera to choose and then i have options to swap from one eye to another eye or to another person for focus so i will actually try to i will try to figure it out which face is in middle and that person i will focus if i shooting uh multiple people okay Okay. Uh, Mo asking if I use any OCF under one of the comments. No, I don't use that portraits. So, uh, uh, most of my portraits uh, with the models, especially on the streets, if I'm shooting myself, uh, I don't use any flashes or lights that way, uh, because otherwise I have to bring extra people to help me walk with that. And I like to be uh, creating lots of different images. I would like to try different locations. If I just gonna shooting with one light, I can, I mean, if I'm going to try, uh, try to use and bring lots of light, then I'm going to have only option to shoot in one or two locations. If I shoot in natural light, I have options to create different backgrounds and different locations to cover during the one hour photo shoot. Okay. Alex, Ole asking the question. Oh, he's not asking questions, it's just uh, thanking me. Oh, well, you write a lot of comments. I have lots of comments not us, right? So I'm trying to answer as much as I can right now. <laughs> So love the photos. I wonder what you, what your white balance was on those shots. And do you have available presets? As Mahito asking me the question. So uh, let me answer that question. Okay. I use on my portraits uh, on settings is after white balance, but I'm shooting all my portraits in raw mode. And I don't create uh, presets uh, because the problem is with the presets, uh, if you're going to be shooting pre in presets, I mean, if you're going to be applying your presets in your images from different photographers, then it's not going to give or create the same, same effect that is going to create on that photographer images effects. So you have to create own presets for your own images that that way those, those presets gonna work because let's say if you uh, if you're trying to apply presets the from the image that created in let's say in the ocean and in the beach but your images is a shot let's say in the really greenery harsh light so it's not gonna help at all so it's not gonna work so I would suggest uh, try learn how to work with the colors create your own presets and then apply to the similar situation or similar images your presets. That's the base option you can do. Okay. 
Daya, Daya Sara asking me, what is on top of your camera from one of the videos? Uh, if I'm putting something on my camera, on the top of the camera, so it's mean I put the, my iPhone or GoPro to record videos for you, to record the videos. Basically, it's recording my photo shoot from my perspective or from the camera perspective. Okay. Okay, have more. Okay, Kurt is be asking me a question. Uh, do you always shoot with available light? Whenever I have a chance, and most of my portraits shot with the available light. I like to work and take pictures in available light. Yeah, if you learn how to shoot that, if you learn how to finding that good quality light, in you can always create beautiful portraits with available light. That should be really easy. <laughs> Only after you learn how to shoot with available light, and it's become really easy. Outstanding portrait session. Do you always shoot with the only available light? Second question. Yeah, it's the same one I just answered. Mm -hmm. How can you use such a low shutter speed, 140, and still get... Oh, good question. R1 Media asking the question. How can you shoot with the... You, how can you sh use such a low shutter speed at 140 and still get sharp images as the girl is not still object and also no lens stabilization on the 85 millimeter and uh i i'm shooting with the r5 camera r5 canon r5 is has image stabilization inside i mean image stabilization sensor is image stabilization so basically with the R5, you can easily shoot at 1.20 or 120, 1 slash 20 shutter speed, and you can still create beautiful portraits, sharp. If the subject um, not moving so quickly and you're not moving so much, you can easily create a beautiful portrait at 120, not even 140, but 120. And I did a lot of portraits at 120. So um r5 did give you the option so it has inside beautiful image stabilization i think one of the best right now in the market unless there is new cameras come out with the better image stabilization inside sensor stabilization or image stabilization whatever you're gonna call that okay Okay, so let's answer that in the video. Hi, Serge, you did, uh, what did you change in the camera for the magenta? And uh, are you no longer shooting with DSLR? Nope, um, Sammy, I don't shoot anymore with uh, DSLR. I'm completely switch all my gears to the mirrorless camera. So right now I'm shooting with Canon EOS R5 and Canon EOS R6. Those two cameras I'm using for my all jobs and photo shoots. Okay. Uh, whenever I see too much magenta, I already showed that in the beginning of video. If you go uh, take a look at the beginning of the video, you will see what I did. You must shoot at low ISO. Okay, thank you. Hold on. I'm going to answer some questions from here from the chat as well. Do you use reflectors? I do use reflectors from time to time. It depends. If I'm, let's say, have a chance to use it at my location where I live, 
uh, at my property, then I will use some uh, uh, reflections, but I'm not always using reflections. I'm using rarely, but I do use sometimes reflections. What your advice for natural light photography? The biggest advice, learn the lighting. Learn how to find directional, good quality directional light. Not where the light coming from all the directions, but from one direction. That way, it's easy to control, easy to uh, put, create the poses at that location. And I have lots of videos uh, in my channel, how I shoot with the natural light. How I'm finding the good light. I think I've already, and I did leave a link to one of my videos, how I'm finding good light. So basically, scroll up the chat and you will see the link to one of the videos how I shoot with the natural light and you can see the good, good uh, advice for you. You must shoot at low ISO if you, if shooting at 120. In R5, it's completely okay to shoot from uh, 100 ISO to 1600 ISO. You're gonna have minimum noise in this range from 100 ISO to 1600 noise. I mean, from 100 ISO to 1600 ISO, you're gonna have minimum noise. It's not gonna affect your image a lot. Even uh, sometimes I'm putting 3200 ISO if I need it. If it's like super low light with 1.2 lens and uh, really good image stabilization on R5 camera and uh, putting ISO 3200, I can shoot in complete dusk. If I still have some available light, I still can create a portrait. With 1.2, with RF 1.2 camera, R5 and ISO 300, 3200. I hope David, I did explain you <laughs> that question. Okay, let's see. I have more questions here. Okay, so my uh, frames are not straight. Whenever I click picture, kind of guide. My frames are not straight. Whenever I click pictures, kind of guide. I don't know if this is actually can be technical so problem, camera problem, or maybe you do some mistakes. I don't know how you shoot, what you do. Uh, sorry, my friend, I can't answer that question. This is, uh, I have to see how you shoot, how you set up your camera and how you use it. That's uh, what it's called in personal level, which. Okay. I'm talking about straight and level. That's, yes, I can't tell you what, because I don't know what kind of camera you use, what kind of lens you use, what you do and how you shoot. Sorry, this is not something I can help you, Bahu. I totally understand with this straight and level. It should be leveled. Um, each camera different, each company creates different cameras. So it can be uh, either you have to kind of adapt how correctly to shoot straight level it or something it's a technical stuff in a personal level thank you 
Okay. Okay, so let's answer some more questions and I'm going to be finishing already because it's already uh, one hour, more than one hour here. <laughs> I follow you, I follow all your videos, try very hard to imitate you, which I can't do. Oh, sorry for that, David. Thank you for this opportunity to actually ask you questions. You're welcome. Thank you, actually. And thank you for supporting. And if someone like to support and do anything for me, the biggest support I want to see is make sure whenever you watch video or whenever you look, make sure you like and comment under the video. This is going to be one of the biggest support. And let's make it one of the videos 300 likes. This is going to make a really big jump or help on my channel. So if you can, make sure you like uh, my latest video, comment, that's gonna pro shows that you really like what I'm doing and you want to see some of my editing. So let's work on that. <laughs> okay, uh, more side. Hi, such love your photography and natural color grading. Is it possible for you to share raw file files with video on next time? I would try to do that. But uh, I want to see first support. So support my channel and I'm more than happy to do that. The more support you're going to do to my videos and uh, uh, whenever my videos start getting uh, good traction and uh, views, such as uh, likes. So first target, we're going to put 300 likes. As soon as one of my videos reach 300 likes, we will do editing and I will, cr and I will give you one of my raw files okay answer one more thing is it fair to use live mode mostly in dsl dslr uh in dslr I probably and i use not the live mode i like to use more uh directly looking inside the eye At so, but right now, the last time I shoot with DSLR, it was approximately two years ago. So, and I got really used to the uh, mirrorless camera. So right now, <laughs> it's kind of hard to go back and shoot in the DSLR. Hi, Sergi. Hi, Viet. Hi. Okay, so let's uh, give it a couple more minutes if uh, I got a little bit more questions. And I'm going to be closing today's live chat. Would you please show us how to do color correction by using color card? Uh, I don't use color cards. If I use it, I will show it, but I don't use it any color cards. So I'm using after white balance when I'm shooting. In the Lightroom. I don't use anything like this. So I using my eyes to kind of uh, color correct. Let me actually drop the link and you can watch one of my videos how I uh, what I do in, in the Lightroom. So give me a second and I will sh uh, send it a link. Okay. My Lightroom processing. Okay, so, okay, I just dropped the link here. This is actually my full tutorial or full video on whole photo shoot, how I do process in the Lightroom. So you can watch that video and you can see what I do. And I do it for every my photo shoots exactly, repeatable. Okay. Thank you. You're very kind. You're welcome. 
Getting the rough files help us to achieve same color grading skills by practicing with your videos and those people can engage more between i fully support you thank you so much anmol thank you so much and i hope this video give you a lot of crunch answers to your questions and here's my video full video on my lightroom process from on full photo shoot okay i hope you Thank you so much. I just found your channel today and you are so excellent and natural teacher. Thank you so much, Viet. All right, my friends, we're gonna be closing today's live video. Thank you everyone who show up and support me and watch that. I hope I did answer a lot of questions that you have it. And uh, we try to create, I'm gonna try to create uh, more lives. So stay tuned for new videos or new live and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.